Hello, my name is Daniel, and you're on the Hardcore Gamers Club, your safe spot for all things gaming, the HGC for short. Today's video is brought to you by Jesse Batista, a dedicated, good-hearted individual that donated $100 to help protect you guys, the gamers, and our kids from idiots that learn how to repair game systems on YouTube and then offer their services for sale. Uh, today's video is going to be an AV port replacement and a micro component replacement on the same motherboard. So two for one, okay. Uh, at the end of this video, stay tuned, I got a special announcement for the box that you're seeing get repaired. <clears throat> okay. Yes, I am narrating this after the fact. <laughs> uh, first thing we're going to do is take an AV port off of a donor board. Now you can do this with a good quality uh, desoldering iron, but uh, for this particular job here, I'm going to be using a hot air gun. It's a Kinda KADA. 952D plus. Okay. Uh, this will allow me to heat up the uh, solder in a nice even fashion, get them all to come loose at the same time. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I'm going to need to repair the port itself because I didn't have a perfectly good one and the one on this board was just slightly damaged so once I pulled this off I'm actually going to repair the AV port as well before I put it on the new donor board okay so what I'm doing here is I'm taking a flat blade screwdriver and just lightly putting some separating pressure and preheating all of the contact points on this. Now you noticed I preheated a, a little bit of the board all the way around. That's to prevent everything from bowing and flexing. Uh, and I also used the hot air gun on the metal portion of the case of the AV port. That's to preheat it. Otherwise the heat will not be able to be enough to actually release the solder so you do have to preheat the metal outer shell of the AV port on the reverse side of the board in order to get it to release from the solder decently okay so we're going to go through here and just take this off nice and gentle You don't want to forcefully pry it off. You just want to give it a little bit of separation. As the solder heats up, it will slowly slide out. And I'm going to have to pause this and start back in again in a moment because I got somebody at the door. Okay, I'm back. So. Well, let's let you watch this while I make some notes on something I got to do here. Okay. So you got to keep the upper side nice and warm at the same time you're doing the lower side. This helps the uh, port to come off nice and cleanly. Now the ideal method would be to use a desoldering iron. But like I said, I'm not really too concerned about that. I'm quite good at using this air uh, hot air soldering iron. Okay, so 
let's go to repair the AV port. Okay, so on the AV port there's a little clip side on each side. Just take your flat blade, pop them off. Alright. And pull the plastic out of the inside. And then you're left with just the port. go. Sorry about the autofocus. Sometimes it goes in and out by itself. Right. It's fairly clean. It's not all melted up. But if you look in here you can see where some of the uh, contacts is a little pushed up and out. It was like that before I took it off. So we're going to correct these in here real quick before we put it back together and clean it up. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to push down on some of these pins here and you'll be able to see hold on, here we go. You'll be able to see the contacts just lift up. See that? How they lift up like that? That, that can't do that. <laughs> it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be in and locked down. Okay, so we're going to take care of that. So we, to do that, we're going to grab a nice fine pair of tweezers. These are very sharp pointed tip tweezers. There's no grip on them or anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to push down using our fingernail on the contact itself on the back side and then we're going to bend the contact itself into place and then release the pressure with the thumbnail and then we'll very gently push it into place and lock it in. not the easiest thing to do on the side pieces because you got the plastic over the top so it'll take a little bit of time that. Now none of them are sticking up. They're all in place. Nice and straight and even. That's what you want. Okay, so now we're going to clean off some of the contact points. Basically all we need to do is just hit, em, hit each and every single one of them with the soldering iron to get off the little lumps of solder that are still stuck to it. This is a fairly simple task. It's more time consuming. That's why I usually don't do this for customers. This is for, uh, well, if you own the box and you want to make a profit and you don't really care about how much time you spend on it and you make it a project box for extra profit, then I would do this and then sell the box. But I don't sell anything. Uh, I'm strictly repairs. And every once in a great while, I might sell off like a faceplate or something like that at my cost. But uh, normally, don't sell anything. Okay. So you want these all nice and cleaned up so they'll go into the motherboard when we're ready. You don't want any solder going from one to the next. And then we'll put this thing back together. Sorry, I was probably inspecting it off camera and didn't realize I was doing that. Okay, so let's 
get this thing put back together here. Oh, I think I was on the phone. That's what it was. Somebody had called. My apologies for the little bit of a delay here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in the middle of a phone call. I do remember now. Okay, I'm off the phone. <laughs> um, straightening out one more pin that I noticed. It was just a little off. And I got another phone call. And I paused it. But this is basically in real time. Okay. Now on the outer casing, there's the parts that solder into the box itself. You need to clean them off. The smaller piece that come off the bottom also has the same two. So sometimes in order to remove it, you got to desolder that as well. As you'll see here in a second when I go to put it on. snaps right back into place. Okay. Make sure you got it on right. Make sure it's all the way down on both sides. Okay. See, I'm kind of pushing the two spears from the casing together, top and bottom there. You see how that's up a little bit? We need to push that all the way down. There we go. Get it to click into place. Make sure it's nice and flush and in place. You don't want it all separated. You'll have major problems. Okay, so we got that all back together. Now we need to take the actual board. Look at this. Uh, this one, the box had an issue. The kid took it apart and plugged it up and was messing around with it and incorrectly diagnosed the problem on it <laughs> and then he was testing it and it still didn't work he got mad and and I guess he had uh, got up real quick and the box fell the AV port yanked it out and then when he tried to plug it back in it just mashed up all of them contact points wouldn't have mattered anyway because it would have done the same thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of aluminum tape. I'm going to protect all of the micro components nearby the port. I'm going to put this on, rub it down nice and good. That way if the micro components get to a liquid state, they won't accidentally fall off. They'll stay in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side of the board. Alright, now a lot of you guys are thinking, oh my god, he's not wearing a grounding strap. My grounding strap's around my ankle. <laughs> Alright, uh, that prevents any static discharge from you touching other components and frying them out. But that's the only thing you really need to worry about the static is on the actual chips themselves, specifically the ones with legs. Okay? The ones with legs you can see. Them are the ones and usually the only time you would have to worry about the static with them is if you actually physically touch them. So, uh, these boards are fairly hardy and are not really all of that subject to static discharge although they very well can easily be. So, it's always better safe than sorry. Now, I'm going to put this in a vise, be very careful that I don't smash any components, but I'm going to put it in a vise here. See, right here there's a, no, no components right there, so I'm going to very gently put this in the vise and take off the AB, AV port on this motherboard. And I 
should notice that my camera is facing the wrong direction right about now. Here we go. Okay. Let me zoom in here. Okay. That's a little better. Alright, so you see how I'm preheating the metal of the upper portion of the housing. Okay, and then I'm going to preheat around the circuit board itself and then I'm going to take my screwdriver flathead and just give a little bit of gentle outward pressure so that once the contacts become liquid it will just slide right out definitely don't want to superheat this very very quickly you want the heat to slowly build on it because any moisture that may be in the motherboard itself could cause it to start to bubble underneath and that is something you do not want to happen so you want the board to preheat nice and slow in order to get the AB port off without damaging the contacts on the board okay there we go it's about to come off now okay now it's off now let me see if I need to oh, okay we're gonna need to remove the solder in the holes okay so you see some of the holes are filled in with solder okay so we need to get that solder out of them holes now you can use a solder wick and a soldering iron but for speed purposes I'm just going to kind of warm up this section here a little bit and then use the soldering iron with a higher airflow and just blast air through the hole and that uh, solder is just going to kind of fly off there and land on the floor <laughs> my wife gets mad at me when I do that but uh, <coughs> it's a nice quick easy way to open the hole for all of the contacts now I do it from the top side of the board down that way none of the solder lands on the board itself because the last thing you want is a teeny speck of solder bridging a circuit component or anything like that okay, so this takes just a moment here I should be about done all right now let's take a look best way to check to make sure you got all the holes nice and clear is to hold it up with a light background on your screen or a white wall see that all the holes are nice and clear okay I got one there just a little bit not all the way open so I'm gonna clean that one up a little bit more or did I well, we're going to find out if it fits first, I guess. <laughs> Don't remember, I, I did this video a little bit prior to narrating it. So you'll excuse me if I may not entirely know exactly what I was doing at the moment. But I believe... Yeah. Okay, so it did need a little bit of assistance. Okay. So rather than sitting there trying to blow all of it out, I went ahead and just used the soldering iron to heat up the solder on the back side to allow the contacts to go all the way through. And don't worry about me burning my hands. Uh, I used to be certified in arc MIG and inner shield welding, and my hands are quite used to 200 degree plus temperatures, so I'm not going to burn my fingers. <laughs> 
200 degrees Celsius temperatures. My hands are quite calloused, <laughs> unlike a lot of these teenagers nowadays that if they touch anything 100 degrees Fahrenheit, they'd probably burn their fingers. All right, so we got all of the contacts all the way in place. So all that's left to do is put a little bit of flux on all of the legs of the AV port. Okay, I definitely need to wipe off the outside of that container. It's starting to get nasty. That's what happens when you get in a rush all the time and don't clean up everything. You should always wipe everything down when you're done with it. And I usually do, but it's obvious that I have forgotten the last couple of 50 times I used that flux container <laughs> to wipe the outside of it down. See, I didn't do it there either. Uh, but uh, a little rag, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and that jar will look brand new. So let's take a look. So we got the AV port on all the way, and all of the contact points are in and ready to be soldered with a little bit of flux on them. So we're going to go through each and every single individual solder contact and solder them into place. So for this we're going to need the soldering iron and a little bit of solder. Normally I'll use a thinner soldering uh, wire, but I didn't feel like pausing it and going into the back to get a new one. I'm quite good at using a fatter one. So as you'll see we'll, we're going to heat up the metal casing, add the solder to it on both of the casing mounts first. This will prevent the AV port for, from moving. So you notice how I'm heating up the contact and then taking the solder and bringing it to the point. Right? Now I leaned back, made sure that the AV port didn't slide down any, and then now I'm going to hit each and every single contact one at a time. Don't take long for them to heat up. Tap, heat, tap heat, tap, heat, tap, heat, tap, just enough to heat the contact up to the, where the solder will make contact and flow completely down to the contact of the board and make a good adhesion to the contact itself. Very important you do that. Okay. Now on components like this you can use the lead solder. You don't have to use the lead free that requires you to get a lot hotter. Uh, it's legal to do so because it's such a small amount in an area. But I wouldn't really recommend the leaded solder for the BGA chips. Uh, it's got a lower melting point it's softer, it's able to collapse under the heat and pressure of the heat sink and the chip. Uh, them, even if it was legal for Microsoft to use lead on the BGA chips, they would not have. Okay, A lot of people say, oh they use the cheap lead free solder on it. Well, lead free solder is almost twice as expensive as the leaded solder. So if Microsoft in any way thought they can get away with using the leaded solder, they would. But even if it wasn't illegal for them to do so, they would have used the lead free because it is more appropriate for a chip of that size producing that amount of heat. So let's not get too far off topic. Okay, I'm going to kind of look here. This is before I cleaned it up. You definitely want to uh, go over this with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip swab. Get all of that flux off there so it don't look so crappy. Okay. 
uh, kind of got a little bit more solder than I needed on there. I'll clean that up just before I wipe it all down. Basically just kind of touch each one, pull away any remaining solder. I'm going to double check, make sure all of the contacts are in place. And then I didn't push them out of place when I put it down. And now I'm going to remove the aluminum tape and our port is in place. Now, I realized what was wrong with this board before the kid had destroyed the AV port and I'll show you that here in just a moment. Alright, here you go. Take a close look. And right here is our problem. Look at that. Just burned right up. Okay. So we need to replace that. We'll take it off of the donor board that we took the AV port off of. Look at that. Just burned up. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to clean that, uh, take the soldering gun, clean that all off, and put a new component on. Okay, I'm going to take our board that we took the AV port off, and we're going to steal a component off of it. It's an identical board. Set that there. Let's take off the bad component first. soldering iron, I got a little pair of tweezers there. <clears throat> Alright. I really should have used a little bit of flux and I think I decided to actually add a little bit of flux here in a second when I realized that I hadn't done it already because usually I'll just apply a little bit of the flux to it in advance and then I'll go to it so there we go I'm going to put a little bit of flux there there we go that'll help get everything off of there nice quick and easy Oops, I guess I had cleaned it with the first one. <laughs> uh, yuck. Alright, there's the flux. That's what I should have did to start with. Okay, and watch how easy this comes off. Zippity doo da, it's off. Clean up the pads. It's kind of hard to hold the camera directly on it while I'm doing that, but I figure if you don't know how to take a component off with a solder and iron, you really shouldn't be doing it. Okay? <laughs> uh, I will show me putting it on. was going to pull this off with the soldering iron but I do remember that I changed my mind and went back to the hot air soldering iron much easier for removing these very very tiny components okay so just kind of preheat the area a little bit Do 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 Sorry. Just trying to fill in the time. <laughs> Alright. Should be about warm enough now. I'm gonna take the 
hot air soldering iron and I'm going to go directly over the top of the component give it some good heat take the tweezers and remove it we're going to put it in it over here and we'll put it in place first now you notice I kind of pointed the hot air gun at the board that was just to liquefy it whatever little bit of flux was on the pads and make it nice and thin okay so let's take a look at what this looks like these are pads we need to clean that off a little bit there we go there we go now that looks nice all right now we'll put the component on Add a little bit of flux. And we're going to place the component. Okay. I'm not going to worry about getting it too exactly straight, but you definitely need it bridging both sides All right. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the component in place with the tweezers and then tap each side of it with the soldering iron with a little bit of solder on the end just enough to add to the solder that's still on the contacts of the motherboard so I'm going to hold that component down, I'm going to tap, tap, tap. You don't want to leave it in place for a long period of time. It's not necessary, you'll burn it up. All right. And then I'll just tap the other side, tap, tap, okay. That's all in place. Now it is a little bit crooked. I'm going to show you a neat little trick with that hot air soldering iron. Oops, I uh, wanted to tap a little bit more here. Neat little trick with the hot air soldering iron to straighten the component out so it looks good and gets a nice, nice clean adhesion to the solder contacts. Right, now you don't want to there we go. Mm, so we're going, 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 going. Okay. I got it in place. We'll take a look at it. Okay. See, it's a little crooked. No worries. Looks like a crappy solder job, but it's very tiny, hard to do. <laughs> That's where the hot air soldering iron comes in really nice and handy. Okay, like my goggles, kind of helps me see the little tiny stuff. We're going to preheat the area of the board, and then we're just going to take that hot air soldering iron, get directly over the component, and heat it up to the melting point of the solder the skin of the solder will straighten out the component suck it straight to the board and make a perfect contact beneath the component to the thing okay, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment here and I think we're just yeah, there we're all done and okay, we'll look at it inspect it be sure I'm happy with it clean it up a little bit make sure I can see everything nice and clean you always want to get rid of the flux flux can become corrosive even though your flux says non corrosive it will become corrosive if you don't clean it off 
Not to mention every last speck of dust in the world will stick to it. Now see that component was nice and straight. Uh, there's a little bit of it uh, kind of misshapen on the left side of the screen there of that component. But that's nothing. The underside is making total contact and we're all done. So this board was in fact a successful repair. Okay. Uh, nice work there. Everything worked out fine. The box is operational at 100%. Uh, there was no need for a reflow. I do believe everything should be fine on it. I am going to give this box away 100% free, including postage to you if you should be out of state, anywhere in the continental U.S. or anywhere in the world, so long as it doesn't cost me more than about 12 bucks to mail it to you. <laughs> if it costs more than $12, I would ask that you cover the difference and you can shoot me that amount via PayPal uh, should you be a winner. You do not have to be a member of the HGC in order to win this box. Anyone that shows up at the date and time of the specified video that will be uploaded shortly after this one, if you're the 200th person that comments on that video on that specific date and time, the box is yours. End of story. I don't care if you're subscribed to me. I don't care if you're uh, a member. Uh, if you show up, you win. Okay. Now, I am going to exclude businesses, so don't use a business email or a business address. Okay. This is for the kids, not for people to win and resell. So, please, if you're a business, don't take it away from the kids. Let them have an opportunity to win it. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, shortly after this video, I will be posting up another video with a specific date and time for this instant giveaway to take place. So stay tuned. Uh, if you want, subscribe. That way you'll receive an email uh, letting you know that the new video come up. Uh, whenever you subscribe, don't forget to put your little mouse back over the subscription button and then when the drop down dialog box comes up, click on the little box receive emails when a video is uploaded. You could always change that later if you got a lot of subscriptions that are sending you a bunch of emails already, okay? <laughs> but you you at least want to get in on that if you if you want a box. Now this will be console only. So uh, there's not going to be any power bricks or anything like that, but it shouldn't cost you much and you probably already have what you need from a box that somebody else murdered on you. So uh, Stay safe, happy gaming everyone, and thank you very much Jesse, you've got a big heart, and I applaud you for doing a good thing for the kids. <laughs>